And then, of course, you have that interesting issue that does match many of this kind, much of this kind of fiction, which is kind of like one of us is going to get it and none of us know who. Right. right. But the reader doesn't know who, you know, sort of the, you know, the, the comic book thing. You have the whole panel of the supporting cast, all the supporting cast members. And, you know, it's like, who dies tonight? You know, sort of uh, the teaser. And what is it at Buckaroo? It's, uh, I think it's, uh, is it Pinky? One of the members of uh, Buck- Buckaroo's team dies. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's Pinky. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, I um, so but, but let's take a step back from death because I think. Right. So, right. Well, that's what I'm saying. We're going to work our way. We're sequencing backward, right? We're going. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, 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 the concept that kind of everything hinges upon. Then I want to, and then we can step back to death if 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 it matters. Um, is uh, the the overall trauma system of the game, right? Which now I'm calling the weight. Yes. Which uh-huh. works real well as a concept. I have to figure out what that concept means because it could mean a couple different things. Um, but is the it is the idea of if you're in a fight, you can get tired. That's one kind of damage. If you're in a fight, you can get hurt, mm-hmm. right? Physically or like because you were defeated and you're right. you know you're just like ugh. Right. Uh, Rocky style. Um, and then part three of that would be you're, you're actually injured or po- possibly killed, like something really bad's happened. And now you have lasting trauma. Right. So those three trauma types. Um, and then the overarching trauma type, which is like trauma to be, which is kind of like fallout, which I'm calling danger, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is the thing that happens to you before the, before the dice are even rolled. It's like, oh, you brought a gun into this situation, plus one danger. Oh, you're driving your car and people are chasing you, plus one danger. That kind of like, you're in a situation that is inherently right. life-threatening, mm-hmm. so we have to make a note of that. So in that case, um, prior to whatever gate opens for death or prior to whatever determinant there is of death um, actually happening, we have at least this mechanical indicator that um, injury, you know, that, that these things can happen to you. Yeah. Um, but it might be worth thinking about that the weight is almost a very different phenomenon from the danger of death or from the risk of you know, the moment of death. The weight is almost like what you have to get if you don't die. Yeah. Right. Well, that's what you put on other people. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, and and so it's kind of like, yeah, any time we're in danger, we're at risk of incurring the weight of some kind, right? Um, but I actually think it makes a lot of sense for that to be decoupled entirely from the actual Reaper coming down on you. It's yeah. actually sort of intrinsic to a lot of these games that you can carry as much weight as you get. And so it's not a matter of, oh, I'm carrying this much weight. I'm more, more risk of dying. It's more like I'm carrying this much weight. And the rest of us shudder simply because it's that much weight. Right. You know, it's like he he's that guy's it's a, you almost feel sorry for him. You're like, like, can't we kill him? You know, can't can't he die? <laughs> you know, because right. right. like, you're almost like, well, the game isn't going to let you die. Too bad, you know, <laughs> too, too bad. It's not going to the game isn't going to let you die until the gate opens because. You know, and even then you don't know, you just got to carry that fucking load. Right. And that's no fun. Um, and so it's, uh, you know, and, and I know you have ways of recovering from those degrees of, yeah. weight, which is fine, which is fine. Yeah. But they're very significant ways. You don't just heal up. No. Right. You have to. And also, to, and I want, you know, the, the weight has to do something, right? And right. the threat of death was one thing that it would do is like, you can carry so much. And then when you go above that number, okay, now it's good. Now you're in danger. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking that might not be the way. I kind of like the idea might, of the, the death stuff being decoupled, but go on, go on. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, but it's just, but then it's, but then it's, okay, so great. It's different. But what does it do? Why, you know, if, if I'm right, walking, right. if what I, is it, all this yeah. is happening to me and I'm carrying this weight. Um, in and the movies, right? These either. I mean, the idea that you maintain right. your competence while carrying the weight is the essence right. of these things, right? I mean, right, right, right. But it's not a penalty thing at all. Burke is carrying a lot of weight. Right. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. ever since uh, you know, arguably from sacrifice on. Oh yeah, yeah. 
he's carrying all the weight. Yeah. Uh, and all these movies where these characters, for you know, whether they're good guys or bad guys, well, are look in at between. Unforgiven, for God's sake. Yeah. I mean, if you actually watch the movie and don't think you're watching some other movie, right? Um, you actually watch Unforgiven and you're like, that guy's soul is gone. It's fucking yeah. gone. This is not a revenge. This is not a revenge fantasy movie. Right. Right. He's he's shattered. He's gone at the at the end of this. So how to get that and what is what is it what does it do? Mm -hmm. Um an obvious thing would be it makes it harder to form bonds with people. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly. Um, yeah, certainly. I mean that that's, that's, that's very straightforward. Thing. Yeah. And it's it isolated. would fuck with your like in uh, Unknown Armies, it would mess with your ability to get um, to have. Uh, well, in Unknown Armies, you have the passions, right? Right. Um, in this, I don't really have anything like that right now, except for like obsessions and compulsions and the. the I, you I know, have a couple that's... of ideas to throw in. Okay. One is that an important part of the system, as we talked about, that you've got is when you do teamwork. Yeah. When you're carrying weight, you're shittier at teamwork. Okay. I mean, can't you think, I mean, of the times when somebody's trying to connect with the guy whose like eyes are like a haunted house yeah, at yeah. that point. And and they turn to the other people and or the, the protagonist is trying to do it and says to the reader, you know, I couldn't help her. Right. You know. And so it's it that's what I'm talking about is that the that, that's very much like a torchbearer actually does that with um it's afraid if you get afraid right which would basically be in torchbearer it's very clear like it's a fear thing but it's also you could easily read it as like depressed it's a despondent form of damage straightforward yeah so yeah it's emotional trauma and you can't the rule is the thing that it prevents you from doing is helping people right you can't give people right. a helping guy and it's great well I think it's uh, the other way around in this one. Here you can't get help. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Maybe you can still help them. I mean, you're still in there pitching, right? Right. But they can't help you. You're closed off. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. So those are those are some thoughts. Um, that there's. I think that there is some other kind of thing that. Oh. Let me make a. It, it came to the obsessions and compulsions. I mean, maybe that's yeah. how you get rid of the mechanical deficit of the weight, whatever it may be. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, so like obsession on, you know, these things. Is it already in there like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, it's already, yeah, those are bonds. They're basically right. bonds. They're just called problems. Right. And they're bonds you don't want. And right. when they get strained, they get stronger. They don't get weaker. Well, I, I so, particularly like the idea of bonding to, you know, an antagonist. Yeah, or that. Yeah, that, seems that would like be right. that. That would be a problem right there. You're you're obsessed. Yep. You know, you can't stop thinking about them. They're you know they're on your mind. You're taking action toward them all the time. You know whatever. Yep, and that one. Yeah, that's the enemy. Uh, a rival is a bond, but it does get you know that's just a it's that's essentially a relation, just a normal relationship. Right. Um, and it'll get weaker if you strain it, and you just will stop caring about right. the person, or they'll stop caring about you. Um, enemies they get stronger. Addiction, compulsion, obsession. Phobias, flashbacks get stronger, and I'm also putting in disease after yeah. Uh, yeah. I talked with Luke. They were talking about, you know, you never have a game where a character has like can't get finds out they have cancer, which is huge in these kinds of. of and I was like, know. oh right, that would be another problem, and it would, and it's something you would just decide. Right. You're like, okay, well, I have a lot of pain, I have a lot of weight. Okay, my character's going to develop a disease, and right. let's see what happens. So that that's going on there as uh, as one of the problems. Yeah, and you can I was have. also thinking of how fucked up Michelle's body is in the Burke stories. Um, before she gets her transition surgery, she right. discovers how. I mean, she's looked into it to see, and she can't right. just go to an ordinary clinic. She would be, she would be uh, uh, ineligible for the transition because her body is so badly messed up from all of her sort of bargain basement attempts to do it over the years. Oh, right. I can't remember. I don't remember that. I, have to, I mean, I'm going to, I want to reread those books anyway. Um, but, but there's, yeah. a, there's, a, Michelle period, there's a period in the beginning, Michelle's just on the fucking skids, right? Just a horrifying yeah. existence. Then after the relationship with the mole and everything gets going, then she's kind of more stabilized, becomes a more yeah. sort of standard member of a team. But she's basically the mom. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, very much so. It's literally the mom. Yeah. But yeah. then, uh, yeah, and she gets the adopted kid and everything. 
but the yeah. but the deal here is that she then finally is sort of like you know had now that she has all these connections and support she's talking about actually getting the transition surgery that she's been dreaming of all her life but she finds out that all of her attempts to do it through you know back alley methods right. have completely messed her up and that there's no way to just go and pay for the operation You're right have to have go to denmark super super, she super, said. super super specialization to do that yeah um but uh but that seems like an interesting point i mean tracking you further you know in the body yeah you don't consider authentic 